In this part of the podcast, I'm going to talk about the parametric polymorphism in Haskell. Uh, this is also the main point of the hindu milner type system. That's the core of the languages of the ML family. And Haskell has a type system that incorporates the hindu milner type system. But in another part of the podcast, we're going to talk about what Haskell has that ML does not have. Uh, Haskell has a notion of ad hoc polymorphism, uh, which is captured by the notion of type classes. Um, first, what is a type system? Well, um, a type system for a language always uh, builds upon the syntax of the language. So first, when we define a type system, we need to have a definition of, of the abstract syntax of the language. This tells us what programs will look like. Next, uh, we define what the valid types are. So we define uh, the set of types by a collection of formation rules. And then, uh, once we have the formation rules which tell us what types will look like, we can then define what the valid judgments are. Um, and here we uh, define a collection of type rules. So that's what you have in a type system. Um, and the type judgments will tell us how we assign types to expressions in the language. Uh, so in this sense, uh, the type system is a system for type checking. Later on, not in this session, but next time around, we'll be talking about type inference. Uh, first, let's have a look at the language that we'll be studying. It's not full Haskell, but it's a version of the Lambda Calculus. Uh, it's an applied Lambda Calculus with features that we know from Haskell. We have variables, we have lambda abstraction, we have application, we've got pairs, we've got local definitions, and we've got constants. What are constants? Well, constants can be numbers, natural numbers to be precise, as zero, the successor function, we have the booleans true and false, and we can test if a value is zero. And that's all we have. We don't have lists or data types or any of the other fancy features. Uh, we could add those, but uh, we're trying to keep things simple here. It is very instructive to first consider a language that does not have polymorphism, because then we can see what we need to add to get parametric polymorphism. So first, let's look at a version of Haskell without polymorphism. It's a simply typed language. It's also known as the simply typed lambda calculus. And it's the language that we've just seen with a simple type system. In this type system, uh, we have types given by the following formation rules. We've got these two types, they're called base types, int and bool. And we've got these two, they're called composite types, because a composite type is built from types. Uh, we've had the arrow type, which is a type of functions. This is the arrow type. And we have the product type. In Haskell, you may know that product types are written slightly differently. We write t1, t2. But it's really the same thing here. This is uh, more similar to the notion of Cartesian product, uh, this notation. Um, when we type expressions, we do that... Uh, with respect to a type environment. And the type environment E uh, tells us what the types of variables are assumed to be. Um, if we have that E of X is T, this means that the variable X has type T. So every time we type, type an expression, we will do so according to a type environment. Uh, now let's look at the type rules defining type judgments. And type judgments within this system they're of the form given a type environment E has type T and the valid type judgments are defined by the rules that I'm now going to show you on this and the following slides. The first rule is already there, and it's a very uh, important rule. This is the rule that tells us what type environments are for. If we have a variable x, uh, then what is the type of x? Well, we look it up. 
in the type environment. Remember, a type environment is a function. So if E of X is T, then E has type T. The next rule is the rule about pairs. Uh, remember, these rules are syntax directors, so we need to have a rule for every formation rule in the abstract syntax. If we have a pair, E1, E2, then a pair has a product type T1 times T2. If we can type check E1 with type T1, and if we can type check E2 with type T2, and here we're using the same type environment as in the conclusion of the rule. Next up, that's the rule for function application, uh, because function application is also in the abstract syntax. So if we have a function application E1 uh, applied to E2, how do we type that? Well, for this to be typable, E1 must be a function. So this means that E1 must have type T1 to T2. So intuitively, this means that E1 takes arguments of type T1 and returns values of type T2. Um, so that's the case. If that's the case, then uh, the application should give us something of type T2. So that's why we have this requirement. Now, uh, the argument E2, the actual parameter, must then have type T1. Um, and if that's the case, then the application is well typed with type T2. Now let's look at function abstraction. So we would like a type rule that tells us how to type lambda x dot e. And... Uh, we would like a lambda abstraction to have arrow type T1 to T2. And um, the gist of this is that the body of the expression E2 should have type T2 because that's the return type. Uh, and we're assuming that it, within the body E, uh, X can appear. So um, X is the um, is the formal parameter, it's the argument of the function, uh, so we should assume that x has type t1, where t1 is the argument type, so that's how we type an abstraction. Now, uh, how do we type an if expression? Well, a conditional expression, if e0, then e1, lc2, uh, has type t, if it's the case that, firstly, the condition e0 has type boolean, and then, subsequently, we uh, check that E1 and E2 are both typable with the same type T. Then if both branches of the if expression have the same type, then that's the type of the if expression. Uh, how about let expressions then? Um, the rule that we're giving now will be different when we talk about polymorphism, but for now there is no polymorphism. So that's fairly simple. If we want to type let x uh, equals E1 and E2, then uh, that has type T2. If uh, E1 is typable with some type T1, and then if we assume that X has type T1, then we can type the body of the leg ex leg ex let expression E2, and it has type T2. So those are the type rules for the simply typed version of our language. Um, there is one last uh, type rule, because we have constants. And um, in order to type uh, constants, we need to have uh, a constant environment. And this is our sigma. This is a constant environment. Sigma from constants to types. So whenever we want to type a constant, we just look up the type of the constant in the constant environment. And if the type is T, then the type of C is T. That's all. So this was the simple version of uh, our type system. This type system, and in fact the ones that follow, all have one thing in common. They have slack, meaning that there are programs that are well behaved but cannot be typed. And here's a tiny, tiny example. Here's one that says if is zero, a successor of naught is true, then successor of naught else true. Um, the expressions at the two branches of the if expression have different type. This is, has type int. This is type bool. 
but one of them is never reachable because this one this um, condition is zero of one is false so no matter what we do we always end up returning true now here's another example and it's a lead expression we have an expression with the local function f lambda x dot x the identity function in f naught comma f true so we're returning a pair where we apply f to naught in the first component and f to true in the second component what's the problem here the problem is that in this component we're assuming that f has type int to int whereas in this component we're assuming that f as type bool to bool and the simple type system won't let us do that um, so what do we do about that well the solution which we shall see in a moment is to have polymorphism parametric polymorphism Because parametric polymorphism will ensure that this example can be well typed. So we can deal with that. 